All right, so what I have on the bench is a, another amplifier, sub-amplifier plate. This is a Dayton SPA 250. This one does have a frequency of just from 40 hertz all the way up to 180. It has a min-max gain adjustment, auto on-off, uh, phase re reverse or normal, low-level input, high-level output, and input. Looks like high-level in and out. Um, voltage selection, power input, uh, very similar to the previous one. It looks like it has some filter caps here, non-polarized caps, probably to filter out some of the low frequencies for the satellite speakers. And it looks like a little signal process, a filter board, and low-level processing for our preamp. And... This looks like, possibly, the actual pre-driver board for the finals. I'm not entirely sure yet. I have a schematic, but I'm not sure if it's for this model. It's very similar. Um, we got some more parts down here that are power parts. We got some. These might. I'm not sure what these are yet. These might be pre-drive for the finals, and this might be. Uh, preamp, and this might be signal uh, filtering. So yeah, I mean, without a schematic, we're totally guessing. And uh, yeah, same thing. Big linear supply, two big filter caps for the plus and minus 15 or 18 volts. And this one's got another bridge rectifier tucked behind here, where the cap, where the cap is between the transformer and the cap. Uh, voltage selection switch. So yeah, it's pretty much all the same crap so uh, we're just gonna go through this a little bit and see if we see any obvious problems any heat spots it looks pretty good here there's a few factory bodges right here um, that board doesn't look like it has any heat scorches on it let's check the front side and everything looks Okay, so far, just doing a quick once over here, just trying to get an idea where to start. Nothing looks bad here as well. Let's look down. Definitely want to check some of these parts. Everything looks okay there. Let's check this little riser board here. Oh yeah, here we go. There's some heat problems right here. Uh, we got some black discoloration on the board. These two resistors down there seem to be have gotten hot. So let's, um, oh, yeah, here we go. There's a capacitor that's pretty much blown its ass off right about here. So we'll have to check that component. And it looks like right below it there's a charred resistor so I think we know where to start at this point and uh, what do we have there RS RS6 and it's what's that C11 is that what it said I saw it say C11. Alright, so I'm going to look at the schematic here and see if the RS6 and C11 are on this print. Um, okay, RS4. Alright, RS6 and C11 right there. And it is, they are in parallel with each other. So I can assume that the, the damage was instantaneous on both parts. So I think we're on to something here. So let's try and get those parts out and replaced and see if there's anything else in this circuit that might be uh, damaged as well. Okay, so I've pulled RS6 and C11 out of, its, out of its place for replacement. And I'm going to replace it with two new parts. And this is the capacitor that was... Uh, 
and resistor that I pulled out here. And as you can see, it's just destroyed. It was just hanging on by a prayer. And this resistor is definitely cooked. I'm going to check other components here as well. RS2 is that big resistor. And um, I'm going to check ZD4. I'm going to check a, a few components in the circuit before I power it back up just to make sure everything else is uh, not damaged as well. Um, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll pl I'm going to replace those components and we'll uh, see what to do from there. Alright, so I've replaced those two components and I've already seen on the back side of the circuit board there's a little bit of a burn mark right, right there. Uh, towards the top center. I can't really zoom in much further. I can't get my lens in there very good, so without it getting too blurry. But uh, I gotta find out what's going on there if that's supposed to be connected or if uh, there's just a short against uh, two traces. So I'm gonna have to, um, you know, clean that out and see what it's supposed to be. Alright, so I'm in. Inspecting a few of the parts around this and that ZD4, that Zener diode right there that's underneath the cap I just replaced is shorted. And that is on the schematic right here. It goes uh, ZD, it's a 15 volt Zener to ground. And um, yeah, that needs to be replaced as well. So uh, everything else looks good. So hopefully just replacing that Zener, that resistor, uh, RS4. Uh, six and uh, C11 I'm going to check RS2 actually I did check RS2 RS2 is good and I'm going to check RS4 and RS8 make sure that they're okay as well and if all that checks out I'll give it a power up all right so I've replaced that Zener diode I replaced the capacitor I placed the resistor I did a little trace work on that board and I think we're ready to test this out let's flip this thing on So we got the second one up and going here. So yeah, um, you know, that's just goes to show how stupid these things can be, uh, the problems can be, and how easy they can be fixed. Uh, you just kind of, kind of know where to start here. Um, like I said, just go along the board and, and check for uh, problem areas, because most likely that is the area that you're going to be replacing components in. Um, it's not always evident where what component has failed, but in this case, that is that capacitor and it was destroyed. It exploded, and the resistor next to it was um, was also cooked as well. And I had a shorted Zener diode, which wasn't so obvious. So, like I said, you're gonna have some obvious faults and some not so obvious faults. But uh, yeah, I'm not crazy about this design. Repairing this is a nightmare. I don't really like it all that much. Um, I mean, had just enough room to get behind here to do a lot of the work from the back side of the board, but it was uh, it was tricky and it was just it sucked. So um, yeah, they always don't they don't always make it easy for you. You know, they they want you to throw these things out and uh, go get new ones. <laughs> That's the whole point. So well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, you know, hopefully you learned something, and we'll see you in the next. Have a good night.